Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So I'm glad you can join us. St. Kitts and Nevis' new administration slammed on its performance thus far. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Wednesday, 25th January 2023. Details when we return. Hubbard's Multi Department Mount Gay and Hubbard's Tire Bay, located at the Building Supplies Compound in Grand Anse, are reminding the motoring public that another round for licensing and inspection has begun. Just arrived are new shipments of quality furrowed and torque tires to fit all makes and models of vehicles at competitive pricing. Shop early to avoid the hassle of long lines. WhatsApp them on 473 405 5482. Hubbard's quality service, affordable prices. Welcome back. As the opposition People's Action Movement, PAM, celebrates its 58th anniversary, the leader of the party has sought to slam the government on some of its initiatives, which he said are not addressing the needs of the people. Andre Huey of SKN Newsline reports. PAM leader Sean Richards, in a statement on the party's YouTube channel this week, criticized the Labour Party government's programs, including the CBI dividend, which was being paid out since December. We were told that the CBI dividend payment would be distributed to the citizens and residents of the Federation. As far as I know, a dividend is a sum of money paid to a company shareholders. If this government distributes dividend payments to the shareholders of SKM, that would mean every citizen. Why have they chosen the category of the pensionable and pensioners and those who are not yet pensionable? to define the shareholders of this federation. The promise sold to voters was to vote for me and you shall receive a dividend from the CBI program. Well, one think that they were speaking to all eligible voters over the age of 18. Why are they not being counted? College students, those who just entered the job market, those who are unable to work due to disability, unable to work to no fault of their own, but who voted and are citizens of this federation? What about those people? Are they not shareholders? A person who works, yet their employer has not remitted social security payments, or if you have been unable to work for the past year, they do not qualify as shareholders of this nation? Why? The party leader further accused the government of victimization. On that issue, Prime Minister Dr. Terence Drew has repeatedly said that the government has not engaged in victimization, but rather have asked persons who are politically appointed to resign. Meanwhile, Mr. Richard listed a number of issues which he said the government has not addressed. The water situation is worse. The hospital is out of water. The cabin home, out of water. Homes out of water for more than a day including during the height of the Christmas and the carnival season. This is unacceptable in modern society. Governments are in office to help solve national problems. Governments are put in place to care about people. The People's Action Movement calls on the government of St. Kitts and Nevis to turn attention to the people's suffering. It is time to stop the posturing. Whether you believe it, you are now in government. Just you. Mr. Richards has appealed to the government to govern with passion, compassion, and creativity that the times demand. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Alleged financial misconduct amounting to an estimated $1.5 million was uncovered by the financial audit into the operations of the Soufre Regional Development Foundation, SRDF, during the period 2016 to 2021. This was disclosed by Parliamentary Representative for the Soufre Fund Saint-Jacques, Emma Hippolyte, during Tuesday's House sitting. Zane Romulus of the DBS News World has more. In February 2022, Sufra MP Emma Hippolyte told Parliament that a financial audit into the operations of the SRDF for the period 2016 to 2021 would be undertaken on suspicion of alleged financial misconduct. During Tuesday's lower house sitting, the Sufra MP disclosed that the audit was now complete. As a St. Lucia Labour Party candidate for Sufra for Shejak in the 2021 election, 
I understood that when this organization was established, it was created with the sole purpose to develop the people of Sufre for Shijak, and that it could not serve the needs of our people if it was not financially viable. The audit report, she says, alleges corruption and mismanagement at the SRDF during the period 2016 to 2019. The auditors found that the board of directors of the SRDF failed to govern the SRDF and allowed for effective management of the organization in keeping with best practices and the provisions of the Companies Act of 1966 of St. Lucia. This resulted in several fraudulent activities and illegalities, leading to a combined misappropriation and loss of approximately EC $1.5 million, therefore placing the foundation in the perilous financial position. Meanwhile, the former MP Herod Salister said ahead of Thursday's Senate sitting that he is appalled at the statement made by his successor regarding the SRDF. The allegation, he says, is irresponsible and injurious to the reputations of the men and women who served on the previous SRDF board, and that the Sufra MP's statement was intended for mischief. Is it that the key executive managerial positions at some of the key organizations in Sufra, the key agencies, have been filled by retirees and pensioners? So these are the issues which you must come and account for instead of making blank statements, trying to tarnish people's reputation, persons who have served with great honor and respect and dignity in Sufre and making blank statements without any evidence to the people of, of, of St. Lucia. She needs to come and let us know what is going on with the $80,000 that the chairman received last month, the $10,000 U.S., that is unaccounted for at the Gruppito Trail office. The, all the senior managers who have been fired at the foundation last week. The audit report has been presented to the new board of the SRDF and the Attorney General for the necessary actions to be taken. For the DBS News World, I am Zane Romulus. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Holness has broken his silence in relation to the unprecedented fraud allegation now under investigation at Stocks and Securities Limited. Nika Lewis of CVM Live has more. Prime Minister Andrew Holness, having finally broken his silence on the SSL fraud matter, expressed anger and disgust at the news now gleaning international attention. Since the incident made its way into the media earlier this week, the public has been clamoring for intervention from the Prime Minister in light of claims that Jamaican athletic legend Usain Bolt was among dozens impacted. Like all Jamaicans at home and abroad, I am thoroughly disgusted and upset by revelations in the public domain surrounding this matter. I'm very concerned and sympathetic to all those hard-working Jamaicans who at this moment are uncertain of the status of funds they have invested with the institution in question. While every investor's distress must be equally acknowledged, there is a dimension of a heightened public sense of betrayal, which I share, that a national icon who has brought so much pride to all of us is also a victim of the alleged fraud. PM Holness also sought to justify his delayed response. This morning, I received a general briefing from the Minister of Finance, representatives of the FSC and the FID, the Commissioner of Police, and the Attorney General's Department on allegations of significant fraud at Stocks and Securities Limited, a non-bank financial institution which is of grave national concern. This briefing was important to properly inform and guide any public pronouncements I may make on the matter. He notes no effort will be spared in providing probity and accountability, adding all accountable parties will be brought to justice. He, however, urges patience given the sensitive nature of the matter. While I understand the hurt and upset all Jamaicans feel at this time, I urge the public not to fuel panic through speculation and baseless assertions. Given the potentially complex and litigious nature of these matters, the government 
must ensure that it verifies every bit of information it gives to the public. This may sometimes create a short lag in updates and responses. The public should also be aware that for legal and other reasons, the authorities will not always be able to respond to all assertions made in the public domain. Nico Lewis, CVM Live. The Ministry of National Security, meantime, officially handed over the long-awaited 750 traffic ticket management system handsets and mobile handheld printers to the Jamaica Constabulary Force on Thursday last. Details in the CVM Live report. Expect an increase in tickets. We may see some increases in the number of tickets until we see a decrease in the number of tickets. And the decrease will come about when people just abide by the rules. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson explains when the new e-ticketing devices were in the early testing phase, 70 were used and accounted for some 70,000 tickets. The force now has 750 devices, which he says represent the overall transformation and modernization process. The commissioner says these devices will be used to regulate motorists' disorderly conduct, noting the system increases an officer's efficiency up to 10 times. And if you're already in the system for a previous ticket, it's even faster to give you another one. So that's the advice I'd give. We, we are not in search of revenue through ticketing. We are in search of a better, better public order and better traffic management. Speaking at the official handing over ceremony, Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang says that the devices have been tested to weather Jamaican conditions. Again, you have to get the right type of printer, the right size, fit on the uniform, and have the robustness to survive <clears throat> the, Jam the Jamaican weather. And uh, a traffic police officer riding a bike through the, 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 the bad roads, the potholes, and the dumps and bumps that go with that and it will survive. So all of that was done. He notes the system's connectivity allows for a smoother process. So when the officer enters your license number and the name and all of that and this, you will get a little printout here, which you can go and pay, but it will go immediately into the tax office, onto the court system house, onto Island Traffic Authority. I'll be slow in catching on a little bit there as well. You pay at a tax office. In fact, you can pay on your phone now. You use your smart instrument like that and enter and just pay a few dollars a charge. Nasika Aliman reporting for CVM Live. Professor Rosemary Bell and Twine is ready to continue her work in shaping the young people of the University of the West Indies St. Augustine campus in Trinidad and Tobago in her new role as principal. More in this TTT News item. During Saturday's ceremony, Professor Rosemary Bell Antwine was not only endowed with the responsibilities of her appointment, she was also officially robed by Vice Chancellor Sir Hilary Beckles. She is elated to continue her journey in helping young people, this time in a different capacity. In my journey, students hold a special place. Not having children of my own, it has been a special joy and responsibility to care for our young people, help shape their lives positively, and be inspired by them. But my work is not yet finished, and being principal gives me the opportunity to broaden its scope and identify the inheritors of that work. Professor Bell Antwine was appointed on August 1, 2022, and is the campus's ninth principal. Minister of Education Dr. Nian Gant Bidonli said the ministry looks forward to more meaningful collaboration and fervent relationships with the UWI. Professor Bellantwine, your task is a demanding undertaking, but one at which I am confident you will succeed. You will provide leadership and inspiration to the students, staff, and community. The induction of the campus principal is a formal ceremony recognizing new leadership and direction and is the official act of the campus taking a historic step into its next chapter. Mahalia Joseph Wharton, TDT News. Publix is once again innovating the way you shop with its new online store, providing 24-hour shopping convenience. You can shop now for appliances, hardware, houseware, building material, and more. Free delivery island-wide. 
start shopping now at hubbardshardware.gd. Safe, convenient, reliable. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.